when you first open up Foundry, it's going to look a little bit like this, but a bit emptier because you won't have those, those other two worlds on there. So you'll go to the game system and install whatever system you want. Uh, for the Champions Guild, we obviously use D&D 5e, so I put in 5e, and uh, it's already installed, so I can't install it again, but uh, you'll just hit the little install button right there. Next up, you want to go over to Add-on Modules and click Install Module. And from this point, you will type in all of the different modules that you want to install. Uh, if you're running uh, for the Champions Guild, here are all of the mandatory mods that you have to have, as well as some of the recommended ones that I encourage you to use and a few of the situational ones. So after you add all of your modules, uh, you could add a password, an ad admin password, um, but that's uh, completely up to you. You can go over to Game Worlds and click to create a new game. You'll add the world title as well as the game system that you'll be using. That's all you need. You can fill out some more of that information if you want, but you don't have to. Uh, you'll obviously log in as the game master, and there is no password needed. Yours, if it's the first world you're installing, will have a cool foundry scene there, but uh, but it doesn't really matter because we're just going to go over to the settings, click manage modules, and activate each of the modules that we have installed. It'll pop these things up because uh, there's some of the, well, I call them support mods, like the socket lib and whatnot. Um, you can just keep on checking them. It's going to ask if you want to activate them every time you click one that relies on it. Once you select all your mods, you can hit save module settings and it'll refresh your page and then you can close out of all these. I usually just put do not remind me. At this point, uh, there might pop some things up in chat like dice so nice. We'll put something in chat as well. You can clear it out or you can leave it there. It doesn't really matter, but we're gonna go back over to the settings and hit configure settings. From here, we will open permission configuration uh, the audio broadcasting and uh, video broadcasting, I don't think this matters because I think by default it will be uh, it will be disabled. Uh, and we use in Champions Guild we use uh, Discord anyway. So yeah, you can just you can just leave those off unless you're planning on using that. Uh, configure token settings. I would encourage you to turn that on so that players can mess with you know fix their own tokens and you don't have to do it all on your own. But if you have players you don't trust, they could give themselves dark vision or make their tokens huge. Uh, so that one's up to you. I also encourage activating uh, create new actors so that if players are importing their characters, they can create character sheets for themselves as well as if they have wild shapes, summons, things like that, they can manage it. Then there's create new tokens, which will let them pull tokens out onto the map. I think that's a good one to leave active. Uh, they sh I, I don't turn on delete tokens. I do remove the display mouse cursor because I think that that's just annoying. Uh, they shouldn't have any reason to modify your uh, mess with your, your mods or any of that stuff. Uh, upload new files lets them upload images for their, their tokens, for their character sheets. So if you don't want to do that, you should leave that turned on. Next up, we've got our token configuration. I like to set the uh, display name to show when it's hovered by everyone. Token disposition, uh, hostile is a good good default way to leave that. Uh, you can enable or disable the token vision by default. That one's up to you. I don't think it really matters too much, uh, but I do like to have the name always showing for the owner, which also includes the dungeon master, so you get to see how, how healthy everyone is. Uh, you can turn the fight commentator or some of the different noises to indicate uh, when, when your turn is starting. This one doesn't matter as much for the Dungeon Master, but as a player, I like to turn that on. I do like to set the default character sheets and uh, NPC sheets to tidy 5e. Uh, I would encourage you to do the same thing, as I think that's just the best character sheet. I love the look of the new ones, but it's just not as functional. Uh, I like to turn off Panda Speaker and turn on left click to deselect. Uh, it's just some quality of life kind of adjustments that uh, that I encourage people to make. For the 5e rules, you, you're in charge at your table, and some of these ones I don't care as much about, like the diagonal rule. Um, you can mess with that by default. I do like having the initiative dexterity tiebreaker turned on. Um, I don't... I think it really comes up that often, but I do like having it on. So a lot of these settings won't really matter because something else is uh, controlling it. Uh, but we'll go ahead and check polymorphing and summoning being allowed, and uh, and then we'll move on.
If you're running the D&D Beyond importer and you are subscribed to the Patreon, this is where you'll set that up. Uh, we'll talk about this a little bit more later on, but just know that this is where you will go to set that up. Uh, hurry up combat timer. Uh, I like to set 90 seconds. I think that's ample time for people to take their turns any longer, and I feel like combat just drags on. I do like to lower the time or this volume, though, just because the ticking can be kind of annoying, which that's the critical threshold is, is how long it will do the ticking. All right, the rest of these settings don't really matter too much, uh, but let's go ahead and save what we have now, and then we'll head on back and set up our MIDI QOL, which is which is probably the most complicated part of this. Hit it, head on over to the quick settings and hit the automate as much as possible, apply those settings, and then we're going to open back up the workflow and make some minor adjustments. I should pause really quick and mention that I'll have a JSON file with all of my settings that you can just copy and and load in there. Uh, if you head to the mechanics tab, then you can import your or the JSON settings there. But assuming that you want to play with it, uh, let's let's walk through these settings really quick. All right, so on this page, we're not going to change a whole lot. The only thing is unchecking the auto fast forward attacks. That's so that we get the option to do it with advantage, disadvantage, or make minor adjustments when we're doing our attack roll. For this exact same reason, we're going to switch this to damage rolls only for the auto fast forwarding. And we're going to switch it to where it rolls damage always. That way, if a player misses, but then they have like bardic inspiration they add on top of it, that... Uh, that their damage is rolled and we can apply that. Next, we're gonna move over to the workflow tab. A lot of these ones are gonna be personal preference, but you know, I'll share what I like to do. Uh, walls block and uh, ignore dead, that one's good. You can require it people to be targeted in combat uh, because if you don't, sometimes players will forget to target someone when they do their attack, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. So just for ease of use, I turn that off. Auto check if attacks hit. I do like it to do this, but I, as the game master, I want to be the only one that sees, and I also like to display the AC. The reason for this is there are certain abilities that specify after the attack has been rolled, but before you determine if it hits, blah, 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 blah. Um, so it, it hides from immediately telling them if they hit or not. Uh, similar reasons on this, I'll adjust that uh, the players, only the game master gets to see who passes or fails the check. You can play with some of these different ones. And again, this is personal preference. I'm just telling you what I like to do on, on this specifically. The next thing is sometimes players like to roll their own. So you can switch this to Monk's token bar uh, and drop the time frame down a little bit. That The time frame doesn't matter because you could force it to go through as a game master. Uh, and you can have it automatically do it. I don't really care personally, but sometimes the players might. For the next section, I do like it to auto-apply the damage because it saves me clicks, but I don't want it to show a card because it's kind of redundant if it's already applying the damage. I think the uh, damage immunities and the rest of that is fine. Also, concentration is ha handled by the game, not MIDI, so we can move on past that. For the reactions, I do like to have the reactions on. I do like to set the timer down to 10 seconds because the attack won't go through until the player uses a reaction or closes out of it, and sometimes they use the bathroom. And if it's set to 30 seconds, that's just a really long time to sit there waiting. Uh, I like that the game helps do its part to uh, to track what reaction has been used, but I don't want it to block anything. So it displays an icon when somebody's used reaction, uh, and it does that for, for all actors. Again, the miscellaneous tab, I think I said mechanics earlier. The miscellaneous tab is where you can import or export data settings from a JSON file. You can play with some of these. I only like to share details for PC cards. Uh, I also like to merge all the roles to one card or condense them down to one so that it keeps the chat looking condensed, clean, all that fun stuff. The rest of this, again, just going to be personal preference. Uh, we can skip through the next section, but feel free to go through here and mess with this on your own. For the mechanics tab, the only thing I really like to adjust is make it, uh, when they get to 50% HP, they are bleeding or bloodied, and it pops up as an overlay, a little little icon. Uh, when players drop to zero, they will go unconscious. When NPCs drop to zero, they're dead, and I like to put this as, uh, as an overlay. The rest of this doesn't really matter. 
So let's go ahead and save our settings, create a scene, and test this to make sure that everything is working properly. We'll pull in a few different monsters to, to test things out. All right, so we'll add them to combat and go ahead and start combat. I did forget to roll for initiative, but it's fine. We'll just, we'll just do that now. Hey, and they're already in the right order. Let's go. We'll do a bite. This is the little prompt that I want to show up so that uh, it recommends doing it as a normal attack, which is accurate, but it gives me the option to do it advantage, disadvantage, add bless or something to it if I wanted to. A 13 hits, its AC is 19, and it applied the 7 damage. That is working appropriately. Let's go ahead and test saving throws and AoE attacks. Let's go ahead and pull in a dragon, because I know that their breath weapons are AoE attacks with saving throws. So, bam, we'll pull this dude in and do his, uh, his breath weapon. Of course, it has to be a line attack. Uh, a 3 and a 4 should not be passing. What's going on there? It's because it doesn't have a DC set for its breath weapon. Uh, let's go ahead and put the DC in there. And we will try that again. There we go. They failed. Uh, perfect. Perfect. That is all working. Now, something else that uh, we'll want to adjust with the settings is coming over here into Monk's Token Bar. You probably don't want an XP dialog showing up after every chat, so you can uncheck that, hit save changes. I had also mentioned D&D uh, &D Beyond earlier. What you'll do is head over to this compendium tab, hit D&D &D Beyond Muncher, and if you leave the monsters blank and you just hit the, the monster munch, uh, it will pull in every monster on D&D Beyond, and it will go into this compendium folder here. But you do have to be subscribed to the Patreon, which I think is $5 a month. But if you pay the $5, you, uh, you get it for the month. You import all the monsters. You only have to do it for one month, and then you'll have every monster on D&D Beyond. So it might be worth doing that. If that video was helpful, keep an eye out for the next one, which is going to be how to prep sessions, set up your scenes, all of that stuff. If you're interested in joining my Discord server, uh, either to DM, play, whatever, uh, there should be a link to do so, and I look forward to seeing you.